over the car. I was afraid you had painted yourself in a corner there. I was a little worried there. All right, Jeremiah chapter 42 is where we'll be tonight. If you want to take your Bibles and find your place there. Jeremiah chapter 42. In chapter 42, Jeremiah is ministering at a time when uh, things are uh, not real pleasant in the land of Israel. They had been uh, carried away into Babylon uh, into exile uh, due to their uh, idolatry and rebellion against the Lord. There is a, a remnant that has remained uh, in Israel, uh, just, just a few um, that, that have been left there. Most have been carried away. The leaders have been carried away into Babylon. The, uh, the, the temple has been destroyed. The city has been destroyed. And those that remain are trying to uh, determine what should we do. Uh, should we... Should we stay here? Should we run away to Israel? I mean, to run away to Egypt, maybe uh, to find uh, help and a new life there. What do we do? And so they send word, uh, you know, to the prophet Jeremiah. What does the Lord tell us to do? And then we get the re Lord's response, uh, beginning in verse seven uh, of Jeremiah chapter forty-two. If you want to look there with me, Jeremiah forty-two seven. It had happened after ten days that the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Then he called Johanan the son of Korea, and all the captains of the forces which were with him, and all the people from the least even to the greatest. And he said to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, to whom you sent me to present your petition before him. If you will, stay, if you will still remain in this land, then I will build you and not pull you down. I will plant you and not pluck you up, for I relent concerning the disaster that I have brought upon you. Do not be afraid of the king of Babylon of whom you are afraid. Do not be afraid of him, says the Lord, for I am with you to save you and deliver you from his hand. And I will show you mercy that he may have mercy on you and cause you to return to your own land, rescuing your joy from Babylon. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we just come to you tonight as we open your word, asking you to speak to us. I pray, God, that you would give me the message that you want me to preach tonight and the power by your Holy Spirit to preach it. I pray, God, that you would put your joy in our heart, your peace in our heart, Lord. And I pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Rescuing your joy from Babylon. It was, it was a sad time in the land of Judah. Judah's world had been turned upside down. Uh, Many of their leaders and their loved ones had been carried away to Babylon. Their place of worship had been destroyed. The, the people were contemplating packing up and, and going to Egypt, uh, maybe start a new life there. The big question that, that was on everyone's mind that remained in the land of Judah is, is there any chance of happiness after all that has happened? You know, and I, I think maybe we find ourselves in, in that, Asking that question today, a lot of people, um, after, after such a wonderful year of 2020, did you enjoy 2020? Wasn't it great? Um, many people are wanting to know, you know, they, they say, you know, things will never be normal again. Things will never be back to the way they were again. Is there any chance of happiness after all that has happened? I've got to tell you, I, I don't like change. Can I just make a confession to you? I, I do not like change. I like things uh, to stay the way they are. Uh, if we could go back to about 1985 and just leave it like that, I, I'd be good. Or back to the days of Andy Griffith, you know, and just leave it, you know, in, in Mayberry. I, I would be happy. I, uh, I, I, don't, I, don't, uh, I don't do change quickly and easily. I was the guy for a long time, I would tell people, don't text me. Because I don't know how to retrieve it. And if I were to get it, I don't know how to text back. The two. Now I have a phone that's much easier to type on. But, you know, the, I, I was the guy with the old flip phone, you know, trying to figure out what number am I looking for that corresponds with the letter. Um, I, I heard someone say uh, one time, I feel like someone stole home away. You ever feel like that? I feel, feel like some, somebody stole my home away. Um, and I found that, that the older I get, the more I like nostalgia. All things nostalgic. You know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm uh, watching uh, 
uh, gun smoke, uh, the, the, all 20 seasons. I'm halfway through. I'm on season 11, so I'm halfway through my marathon. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't like things that change, and particularly uh, when, when it changes and it doesn't seem like it changes for the better. Um, <clears throat> in Judah, things had changed, and, and they didn't seem to be a change for the better. Um, Babylon had conquered their land. The temple was torn down. Uh, mo- many people were, were carried away into exile, sons and, uh, sons and fathers and, uh, had been carried away and, and things did not seem as though they were nearly as good as they, as they were. And, it, you know, maybe you find yourself in that situation. I, I, I just wish that things were the way they used to be. Um, so I think uh, the Lord through the prophet Jeremiah has some words of wisdom, words of encouragement for us tonight. So we're going to look at three things to keep in mind when searching for your joy. Three things to keep in mind when searching for your joy. And the first thing is this, the way things were. We, we need to remember the way things were, and we need to remember them accurately. Judah remembered how great things used to be. That's, a, that's sometimes a dangerous path to start going down. Because they... The more they remembered how great things used to be, the, the worse it made their present condition seem to them. In other words, the more we look back longingly on the way things used to be, sometimes the worse it makes things seem to us in the present situation. Uh, in Psalm 137, Psalm 137 is written uh, uh, by exiles, people that had been carried away into Babylon, and they... They were um, taunted by their captors. Sing us a song of Israel. Sing us a, a song of mirth about Israel. Look what they write uh, in, in Psalm 137. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hung our harps upon the willows in the midst of it. For there those who carried us away captive ask of us a song. And those who plundered us requested mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. If I do not remember you, let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not exalt Jerusalem above my chief joy. Remember, O Lord, against the sons of Edom, the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it to its very foundation. O daughter of Babylon, who are to be destroyed, happy the one who repays you as you have served us. Happy the one who takes and dashes your little ones against the stone. Now, we may look at that and say, well, that's a horrible thing to say, but I think you're seeing the heart of a, of a people who had been broken, uh, the, the, the broken heart of a, of a people who had been carried away and lost everything. And, the, and, they, and they sat down and they hung up their harp uh, by a river in Babylon, and those that took them away captive taunted them. Sing us a song, a happy song about Jerusalem. And all they wanted to do was weep and mourn. Sometimes we get in a situation where all we can do is remember the way things were. But two things that people usually miss when, they're, when they are looking at the past. Two things that people usually miss when they're looking at the past. First is we tend to remember the good and forget the bad. Don't we? We, we tend to remember the good and forget the bad, were things that really that good in Israel. I mean, they remembered, oh, how wonderful we had it in Israel. Well, <clears throat> prior to the exile, it, it was a time of idolatry. It was a time of rebellion against the Lord. It was a time uh, of immorality. Uh, it was a time of uh, political unrest and instability. I mean, it wasn't the best of times before the exile, but all of that is forgotten. All they can remember is how good things used to be. I can remember, I can remember my dad, uh, you know, telling about uh, growing up in the Great Depression. You know, uh, I can remember him saying he, he would come to breakfast and there was nothing to eat. Uh, you know, and what what uh, you know, I mean, work. You know, you, you work all week. I, I can remember him talking about uh, begging his dad for a night. That they were having a a tea at the at his school, and you got for a dime, you could get a, a piece of cake and a glass of tea for a dime. 
He said he had to beg, beg his dad for like a month to, to get that dime, to get that glass of tea and, and, a, and a piece of cake. But then there are other times I could hear my dad talking about when he was a kid, he talked about the good old days. They were the good old days. I'm like, but I thought you were starving to death, Dad. How were they the good old days? Um, you know, you, you hear, I've heard old people talking about, uh, and I, I mean, I think most of the World War I people are gone now, but I can remember as a kid um, hearing old people talking about, back in the good old days, I'm thinking good old days, you lived through two world wars and a great depression. How was that the good old days? But in our mind, we, we, we think like that. We think in those terms. You know, I, I think of when I was a kid, and, and my, my first reaction is to talk about, oh, yeah, the good old days. I was born, uh, you know, five years after JFK was assassinated. I was born the year that Bobby Kennedy was assassinated, the, the year that uh, MLK was uh, uh, assassinated. I was born in the height of the Vietnam War, the height of the Cold War. I don't know that those were the good old days, but we tend to look back on ro with rose-colored glasses. So be careful of, of the past, of looking back, because we tend to see what was the good things and the things that we enjoy, enjoy and forget the bad. And then the other thing is that we miss is that the mistakes of the past are what caused the turmoil. In other words, <clears throat> the mistakes and the sin that Israel committed in the past are what caused the turmoil in the present. And a lot of times, you know, whether it be on a personal level or on a national level, our mistakes of the past are what cause the unpleasant, unpleasantness of the present. If you want to look at it on a national level, you could say that the mistakes we made in the past as a nation have led to uh, the problems in our, in our nation and our world today. If you want to look at it on a personal level, you can say, well, if my, if my life is a mess, oftentimes it's because of mistakes I've made in the past that, that have led to the turmoil of the present. The exile was judgment for the people of, of Judah's sins. So God's word through the prophet Jeremiah is this, remain in the land. Now I'll tell you, that's not what they wanted to hear. They, they wanted to hear, oh, God's going to deliver you, God's going God's to rescue, and all the people from Babylon are coming home right away. And, and he's gonna, God's going to miraculously throw off uh, the, the, the yoke of Babylon and everybody's going to be free and it'll be glory days in, in Judah again. That's not the message. And sometimes that's not the message. Sometimes we want God to rush in on a white horse and miraculously rescue us and make everything great all at once. But oftentimes that's not the way it works. Oftentimes the message that we get in our life is the same message that Judah gets here. Uh, remain in the land. In other words, stay put, stay where you are. I'll build you up. I relent concerning the disaster. Now, by this, he doesn't mean, you know, I, I was wrong in doing it. He just means I love you uh, and, and, and I, you know, I, I'm sorry that it had to come to this and the punishment will soon come to an end. So, um, Keep in mind the way things were, the way things really were. I, uh, I love one of my favorite painters is Norman Rockwell. I, I love his paintings. I love his stuff. Um, and I was reading a, you know, a. I, I have actually have like one of his little painting books, you know, that has his pictures in it. And he was talking about why Norman Rockwell and his paintings were so popular. It said his paintings were so popular because he, he didn't paint America the way it was. He painted America the way we wished it could be. And I think so often we look back at the past and we don't see the past as it really was. We see the past as we wished it could have been. And it really wasn't as great as what we remember it to be. So keep in mind the way things were. Then... Then remember how things are. Keep in mind the way things are. Verse 11 of, of chapter 42, uh, the prophet says, by word of the Lord, Do not be afraid of the king of Babylon of whom you are afraid. Do not be afraid of him, says the Lord, for I am with you to save you and deliver you from his hand. 
So the prophet's advice is, is this. To the exiles, he says this, don't try to go back. Uh, to those staying, uh, pre- staying in Judah, he says don't try to run away. Don't try to go to Egypt. You know, I, and I think, I think that's, that's good advice for, for us when we're trying to find our joy in the Lord. Uh, you can look back on the past, but don't try to go back to the past. No matter how bad I want it to be 1985, it never will be again. So don't try to go back uh, and don't try to run away. Um, you know, I, I know people that, that they, their whole life is categorized by just running away. Uh, you, you, you can't escape problems by running away from them. I mean, sooner or later you're going to have to stand and face them. And, and uh, so don't try to go back. Don't try to run away. Rather stay and make a difference in your world today. And I think that's really the word, the word of the Lord for us tonight is, is, look, don't try to go back to the way things used to be. Don't try to, uh, to run away to, you know, to some uh, other uh, spot where maybe things might be different or better. Uh, instead, stay where you are and make a difference in the world today right where you are. Um, Jeremiah writes a, a letter to the exiles in Babylon in chapter 29 of Jeremiah. Um, beginning with verse 4, Jeremiah 29, verse 4, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who were carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and dwell in them, plant gardens and eat their fruit, take wives and beget sons and daughters, take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands, so that they may bear sons and daughters, that you may be increased there and not diminished and seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive, and pray to the Lord for it, for in its peace you will have peace. Now, do you understand what what he's saying here? He's saying not only stay where you are, but pray for the city that has you. In other words, pray for Babylon. Pray for for the people and pray for the city that have carried you away and caused you so much heartache and so much pain Pray for the city, pray for the people, pray for their welfare, for in their well-being, their welfare, so you'll find well-being and peace. Completely opposite of what they were expecting. God promises a few things to them. He says, first, you don't have to fear Babylon. I think that's a good word for us tonight. You know, because the world is a scary place. Uh, it's not a per- place that loves God and, and certainly doesn't love those who, who follow Him. But you don't have to fear the world. You don't have to fear Babylon. Greater is He that is in us than he that is in the world. That's what Scripture tells us. Secondly, He says from this, I'll, I'll be with you. I'll be with you. What a, what a comfort, what a joy knowing that God will be with us. I, you know, I can face just about anything Babylon can throw at me as long as I know the Lord is with me. And then finally he says this, I'll save you and I'll deliver you. I'll save and deliver you. So there's a promise of rescue there. Now it may not have been as quickly as they would have preferred, and our rescue from this old world may not be as quickly as we would prefer, but in God's time and in God's way, He will deliver us. And so there's, there's hope and there's promise in that. You know, what if we lived every day like these were the best days of our life? You know, I could... I could I could ask every one of you, you know, write down what, you know, what year was the best year of your life. And I bet of of everybody in here, I doubt I would get one piece of paper that said 2021. That's the best year of my life, 2021. Um, And and I don't know that I would write that down, you know, especially unless I knew what I was looking for. But, you know, I don't know that that would be what I would write down. But what if we lived every day like I was living the best days of my life right now. You know, I, I, uh, I told you I like nostalgia, and the older I get, it seems like the more I like that. And so I got, I got this book. I, I really like the 50s. I, I, like, I like that era of uh, really cool cars, cool music. I mean, it, just, it was just a neat time in history, or so it seems to me. I mean, I, I wasn't alive there in it, uh, but, I, you know, I grew up watching Happy Days, so, you know, I you know, I. I I think of the 50s in terms of Richie Cunningham, you know, and everybody was happy and everything was good, you know. Um, so I got this book on, uh, this nostalgia book on drive-in, old drive-in theaters. 
and, and it's got these old pictures, old black and white pictures and stuff in there. It's really cool, really cool cars, and, and they've got the, you know, the, the blue jeans with the cuffs turned in the, in the, in the bottom of them and, and the, the sleeves rolled up and everything. I thought, that's really cool. And I got to watch, you know, I got to look in it every picture. Every picture, there's somebody smoking a cigarette. <laughs> like, every, every one, like every picture. And it's like young and old and mom and dad and, and you know, teenagers and everything. It's like, and I'm like, wow, not everybody was Ward Cleaver in the 50s apparently, you know. And I, and I thought, how are they not all dead, de dead of lung cancer now? And then it, then it hit me, wait a minute, most of them are. And it, I mean, no, no joke. And then, I, then it dawned on me. You know, I, I mean, I think, oh, I, I wish I could have lived through the 50s. And, the, and then the, it dawned on me, Mark, if you were a teenager in the 50s, chances are you'd be dead right now. I mean, or, or really close to it. I mean, you think about that. That was, if I was 18 in 1952, that was 70 years ago, I'd be 88 now. I mean, I might be still alive, but if I was still poking them, uh, uh, smoking them uh, uh, cowboy killers, I probably wouldn't be. And then I thought, and it, it seemed as though the Lord kind of said this to my heart. If I'd have wanted you alive in 1950, I'd have put you alive then, but I put you alive here because now's when I've got a job for you to do. Here's the thing. God has placed us in history at the time that he needs us there. You have a job. You have a specific job to do right now. Uh, and he needs you right now. We can't be, be, be lost in the 50s. We can't be, we can't be uh, living in the, the, the past because God has us here. You know, the past is a fun place to visit, but you can't live there and be happy because God dwells in the present. God is not the God of I was. He's the God of I am. And, and in order to be happy and accomplish your purpose, we have, to, we have to live in the here and now. I hear people talk about some, sometimes in church, you know, and they talk as though, as though God died somewhere back under the brush arbor. Oh, back in the good old days, we really had church. And we, you know, I can remember as a little girl, and we'd go to the brush arbor, and we'd preach, and we'd sing, and all that. God didn't die under the brush arbor. He's still alive. The same God that worked under the brush arbor is at work today in our lovely modern 1970 facility here. God is at work. He didn't die in, in the 50s. He didn't die under the brush arbor. and so. Be aware of how things are. And then finally, we need to remember the way things soon will be. The way things soon will be. Verse 12 of chapter 42. Uh, Jeremiah said, uh, the word of the Lord by Jeremiah, I will show you mercy that he may have mercy on you and cause you to return to your own land. In other words, God's promise is this. Things will be good again one day. And I think that's the promise that he wants us to hear. Things are going to be good again one day. He says to him, first of all, I'll show you mercy. What a wonderful promise from the Lord. I'll show you mercy. Then he says, I'll cause Babylon to show you mercy. Now this is quite a promise. Because Babylon was the one that hated them and carried them off into exile. He says, I'm not only going to do a work in your heart, I want to do a work in the heart of the ones that hate you. To, so that, that they'll show mercy to you. And then he says, I'll bring you back to your own land. Bring you back to your own land. You know, no matter how bad things seem today, better days are coming. People say, well, I just don't know what this world is coming to. Well, I can tell you what the world's coming to. It's coming to an end. And Jesus is coming soon, and he's going to fix it when he gets here. Uh, and when he gets here, it's all going to be good. And happy days will be here again. I really don't know that it's going to get a whole lot better until he does come back. In fact, as I read Scripture, uh, I don't read that things are going to get better. In fact, I read that they're going to get worse. But 
but there's joy even in the midst of these difficult times because, because Jesus is a soon coming king. In, in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, Jeremiah 29, verse 11, the prophet speaking on behalf of the Lord says this, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. This, is, this 13 is, was our VBS uh, uh, scripture memory verse. Uh, those of you that work VBS, you'll remember this. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you to the place from which I cause you to be carried away captive. What a wonderful promise the Lord gives us that better days are coming. You know, and here, here is the key to it. If you want a better, a better tomorrow, it starts with repentance today because just as mistakes of the past cause the problems of the present, so repentance in the present leads to the blessing in the future. So if you want a better future, it starts today. Don't wait until tomorrow to, to, to hope for a better tomorrow. A better tomorrow starts with repentance and seeking the Lord today. Hard times don't last forever. The, uh, the, 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 the lean times of the, of, the, of the late 1920s and 1930s were followed by the boom times of uh, the late 1940s and 1950s. Hard times. Uh, don't last forever. 1920 was hard. 1921 seems to be easing up a little bit, going a little bit better. I don't know what 22 will hold. I don't, I don't know if there will be a 22. Maybe Jesus comes back and fixes it all, and it's a whole lot better. I just know that hard times don't last forever, be it in our world or in your life. You know, some of, some of my happiest times in life have been at times when the things in the world around me were a mess. And yet I look back at, at times with great joy because I was, I was close to the Lord and serving Him. And it, it didn't seem, I wasn't focused on all the, the goofy, weird, and, and evil stuff going on in the world. I was just focused on what me and the Lord had going. And it was a beautiful, wonderful time. So no matter what goes on in the world and, and what, you know, what may happen in 2021, if you and the Lord have things right, there's joy to be had. There's good times to be had there. You know, what, if, what, if on, what if instead of focusing on the past, we focused on the future? What if in, instead of uh, always looking back to, to what the way things were, what if we're always looking to the way things soon will be? You know, I... I uh, heard uh, somebody said, uh, Brother Paul, one of Paul, Brother Paul's favorite verses was, and it came to pass, uh, uh, or something like this, uh, and it came to pass, this too shall pass, something of that of nature. Um, I think there's, you know, there's, there's joy to be had in that, that the hard times are not here forever. They, they come to pass. Um, they don't come to stay. They come to pass. Um, and I, I, one of my favorite verses is Romans 8, 18. For I reckon, Paul says, that this, the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. We suffer for just a little bit here today that in the, in the tomorrow that is eternity, we, we find eternal blessing and eternal joy. You know... <laughs> Uh, in that nostalgia book I was telling you about, there was one one little part that it was like at a uh, uh, a convention, you know, and they had a they had a um, an exhibit on the future and the way things will be in the future. You know what they what what their future was? The 1970s. <laughs> uh, the, the way in the future. Come and see all the. All the way things will be in the future, 1970s. And, and it just got me to thinking, 
Today is yesterday's future and tomorrow's history. You know, uh, today, not, 2021 is, you know, 1985's future. But it's, you know, 2030's yesterday. Will you be able to call this day the good old days? Will you be able to look back at August 1st, 2021 and say, those are the good old days. Those were the good old days. You can if you're serving the Lord. You can if you find your joy and your peace with Him. And if you want a better 2022, it starts with getting things right with the Lord in 2021. Have you been able to rescue your joy from baptism? Let's pray. God, I do thank you for uh, your word. I thank you for the encouragement that we find there, Lord. God, I pray that you would put your joy in each of our hearts, Lord, as we seek to, Lord, uh, not forget the past, but to put it behind us and look towards uh, the better days that we have with you. God, I pray that you would speak to us now and in this invitation time and lead us to the decisions that you'd have us to make. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.